Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of True Blood Season 5, Episode 9. A much better episode, for me anyway. The, it had better balance with all the characters I thought this week. Not to mention the plot advanced rather well, a lot, well, really well, because a good chunk of storylines actually finished. And it feels as if right, right now we're only down to like two major storylines, possibly even one, which is certainly much better than, um, which makes me feel certainly much better than I did at the end of last week's episode. So I was really, really happy with, um, with what went on in this one. And they did great setup for the last three, and it feels like we might actually get, you know, a pretty nice conclusion here. Now to start with a little bit of the kind of, I guess, the, the bad, if you want to call it, which was Aliseed. It's not that it was bad, it's just it felt... It felt like he didn't need to be in the episode. I assume they're setting something up for these last couple with him. And it was nice to see um, Robert Patrick, or T-1000, who played Aliseed's uh, father. But, you know, in this episode, every time... It only cut to him, I think, maybe twice. And that was almost, like, too much. When we first saw him and he was just heading to Jack Jackson, that's all I really needed to see, if anything at all. I don't know if that was a setup for stuff in these later couple of episodes, as he might be trying to get that pack again, or if that's even a setup for next season. So I'm not really sure where that's going to go. But again, that's I'll hold off criticism to see where, where, uh, where they do go with that this season. Terry's storyline wrapped up, thank God. However, not good is that the cliche that I said I didn't want them to do last week, which was Patrick going nuts and holding like Arlene captive, is exactly what they did. So it was cliche, cliche, and it was stupid, and the whole scenario was stupid, and the the whole scene where you know the woman came and told him you have to do what you know you have to do do the right thing. I'm sitting there thinking, like, is he gonna turn the gun on himself or just shoot Arlene or something? Like, no, he just shot Patrick. Just amounted to nothing except finding out what happened to Terry in Iraq. I'm guessing we're done with it, unless this bitch comes back and is just like, you know, nah, you know what, kill yourself too. But, just ultimately amount to, amounted to nothing. Yeah, it was better than last season's, you know, nonsense. Um, and it's not the actress' fault either. Terry and Arlene had a really, really good scene early on in the episode where he basically told her the only reason I'm fighting is you. So, like, that stuff's fine, but please put them in the background next season or use them like they used Andy this season you'll get to even you know more later on there's nothing wrong with the way they've used andy this season it's just been like this just was not needed they brought in lafayette which is fine but and then he went off and did other stuff basically but it was just overall the, that whole storyline just didn't just completely rendered useless and i'm just kind of glad it's done i mean what did we learn what did we learn other than what happened in the past I, you know what Jack shit. The Sookie and Lafayette uh, stuff was pretty good because it was nice to see that she was using, you know, Lafayette for his, like, services, I guess. Uh, the Whoopi Goldberg line was funny from Ghost. Yeah, I'm a fan of Ghost. Don't talk shit about Swayze. The... And the whole thing was funny with the, the ghosts being, like, cryptic and everything like that. And I like that she went right to Bud to find answers. And I was wrong about this. I said last couple of weeks ago when Andy went to visit Bud, the scene just felt like a bathroom break. That it was useless. Apparently it's not, because they wanted us to get, like, you know, Bud back in our head, basically, remember him. So when they got to this, um, we would. And it would feel less completely out of left field than it, than it did. Although it did feel a little bit out of left field. Maybe more than a little bit, but still. Uh, it was a nice, it was kind of like a jarring kind of thing where all of a sudden she got shackled up right next to Hoyt. So, yeah, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really mind that. I'll get into what it's going to be moving forward with her storyline in a little bit. All right, everything with Jason, Andy, and Jess I like. Jess didn't really have much of a role in the episode. Uh, it, she's clearly affected by what happened to Hoyt. I don't know where they're going with that, if they're going to have her have feelings for him again, uh, especially now that he's, you know, not dead. But because she seemed to recoil from Jason a little bit and make him really prom. I don't know if she has feelings or if she just doesn't want him dead. Again, those are two very different things. So we'll see where that goes with that. But as far as like Jason and Andy, I thought they were great in this episode. They were a fun team. Beating the shit out of the um, out of the guy uh, the guy in the cell, uh, which is not good cop work. I like that Andy had like a sense I'm the worst sheriff here, and but they both figured it out. They figured it out that it was Andy. Figured it out it was Bud, and then using what Sam and Luna said, figured out the whole pig shit thing, and Jason knew where the other farm was. So they made like a good team, and it really worked out. I thought pretty well. I, I love 
uh, Sam and Luna together. I wanted Luna gone earlier in the season, again, just for the sake of the show, like I said. Uh, not for her, but there, I think, I love how they, like, fight, uh, but say, like, kind things. Just a whole, I'm saying I love you, and she's like, oh, you know, it's a nice, you know, first time of saying that. And she's like, I love you back. He's like, good. Uh, it was just very, very funny. And they use their, the, the shifting powers to, like, good use. And he kicks them out so they become flies, and then I thought it was awesome the way that Sam was the pig that caught Suki, and, um, it was just cool that they brought them into the storyline just very easily, and Luna got a little bit of revenge. Uh, and the whole thing, the whole scene with um, Andy shooting Bud, you know, gave Andy, you know, some purpose, which was nice. And, you know, Jason kind of cradling Hoyt, which, you know, um, it was nice to see. I mean, Hoyt might forgive him a little bit more considering now that he saved his life. The authority this week was not the main plot. It didn't feel like the main plot either, which was smart. They knew that they had to wrap up the other storylines, so the authority took a little bit of a back seat this week. Uh, because that's going to become the ultimate like main thing for the last three. I never thought Eric's plan was going to work, because I was pretty sure Bill just wasn't going to give in. Even though I didn't, I, I'm not buying Bill's whole trans his whole transformation. I don't, and I don't think it's a long con either. It's just not. I don't know. It's too. If it is a long con, fine. But it's too. I don't know. It's just too much, too fast. And that scene, the like the sex scene was just i mean i couldn't tell if he was disgusted by what was going on or it didn't seem like he looked very enlightened certainly i i thought he was more disgusted also i thought that from the comic-con preview that bill was actually back with Sookie, so i'm glad i was wrong about that thank god so yeah i didn't really buy that the whole cliffhanger was just kind of all right eric's in deeper shit uh, but it was more about um basically using the authority this week kind of just as a little bit more of a placeholder for all the other characters to get to get <clears throat> together because they're about to you know face the authority moving on with russell and steve newland kidnapped uh emma which i liked also because it makes russell much more dangerous which he hasn't really been this much he's been having like too much fun he was pretty dangerous in that scene it was pretty upsetting and it brings Sam and Luna into the, the fold of the Authority storyline, which they pretty much did with almost every other character by the end of this episode. The main thing that I caught is when Russell was choking the one alpha wolf, he changed his accent. I don't know if it was like British, or I thought he was supposed to be like Celtic or something. Um, he definitely changed his accent, and I gotta think that he's gonna end up being Marlo now, because... I don't know, just the whole idea that it would be a new character is just strange, and it just would make sense to basically bring Suki into the storyline against the authority, um, and like further using, you know, Russell as like, you know, this Marlo character that she's really after. So yeah, I'm, I'm just pretty much going to say that I think that's what it's going to be. The Tara and Pam stuff was very funny this week, uh, just from her carrying the cases of True Blood to uh, calling her a vampire Barbie, and then just the way Pam looked right after that, which you didn't really notice. Uh, before Tara said it. It was very, very funny. And uh, Tara and Pam got yanked into the Authority storyline because of what happened to Eric um, and getting the new, you know, Sheriff of Area 5. And I like that Tara came right to, you know, Pam's aid right away, or tried to anyway. So, yeah, so now Tara and Pam are going to be joining everyone in fighting the Authority too. But pretty much everyone is going to be in because if Suki is going against Russell, if Russell is Marlo, then that means Jason is going to be in. Uh, Jessica is going to be in just for the sa sake of Bill. I think she may try to take care of Ho Hoyt a little bit, but I think she's going to help help them with basically fighting. So yeah, and then Alice, I don't know what they're going to do with Alice. He might be back in it, but yeah, and then plus Sam and Luna will be in it. So it looks like all of our characters are going to be you know together. Uh, I don't know. I mean Lafayette. Lafayette could always just come back and come and join in because Tara's going to be there. You know, they at least mentioned Tara this episode, which was nice. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the fact that all of our storylines... Yeah, I don't care if Terry's a part of it. I like that all of our storylines that I was bitching about last week have now turned to, like, one. Or seemingly one. And one with three episodes to go. And we know how the show likes to set up the following season with the last episode. So, I hope, I hope these last three episodes really do just focus on, like, all the characters grouped up, taking on the authority and everything going on. Because I think that'd be a lot of fun. 
and it would create a better balance with all these characters, which is what this show needs. And I really, really hope they do it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, which after last week's episode, I was worried this week. I'm far less worried now. Some people maybe thought this one was too crazy also, but uh, well, let me know what you think, I guess. Uh, but I enjoyed this one much more. Uh, the season started to derail a little bit the last two weeks. I thought this put it back on track, definitely. Sorry for the pun. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's all I got. If I forgot something, sorry. I'll try to put it in the comments. But uh, let me know what you thought. All right, guys. Later.